Yeah, I'm the first one. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what was so attractive about Cora when you first heard about it. What, uh, what excited you? Well, whenever you're sort of reprising a film and doing a sequel after so much time, especially a film that had such cultural resonance as Tron, you feel a certain responsibility to do it justice. And Cora was introduced as a new character that I wanted to um, create in a way that would stay true to the, the, the themes of the original, that would um, represent uh, something that relevant to the original question that the original Tron was asking. So the idea of what is our relationship to technology, um, is all technology inherently uh, um, uh, evil, can it be created for good, all these questions. So I was interested in just what Cora would represent. And then when we started really discussing the character, I was interested in her being unlike any female role in any of these big action adventure flicks. I wanted her to be for the girls. I wanted her to be a warrior, but also very intelligent and very vulnerable and compassionate. And so I had a lot of fun researching her. And it became more and more of a joy to create Cora as I found different cultural references, historical references to inspire me. One of the major ones was Joan of Arc. Once it kind of clicked in for me that Cora was Joan of Arc of the cyber universe, I felt so confident that whatever they threw at me, whatever script revisions came my way, I understood her perspective. Um, you know, and the reason she's Joan of Arc is because Joan of Arc was this unlikely warrior, this kid who was leading the French army. She had a kind of supernatural strength um, carrying this giant sword, huge chainmail uh, armor, but also this kind of compassion, optimism, and, and light. Um, and so that's what I wanted in Korra. It's an unusual combination to be a kid and also a warrior. Um, and so I just, I had so much fun with that, and I'm really pleased with the result. Yeah, tell me about how uh, your perception of the, the finished product matched up with your perception of what you thought was going to happen as you were doing it. I can honestly say the film has surpassed all my expectations as far as how overwhelmingly cool it is. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was going to look cool, I knew it was going to sound cool, but everything put together just, for me, it's it's like this revolution in filmmaking and film watching. It really feels like you're on a ride. and. That was something that I think we hoped for, but when I saw it for the first time the other night in 3D, I realized like, wow, this is major. This is, this is more than a movie. Um, and so I'm really, really proud of it. I, I, I was curious to see how they painted in the rest of the world that we couldn't see. I was very curious when we were shooting how Clue would end up looking, because when I worked with Jeff, of course, he was wearing this face replacement motion capture rig, uh, what I called the Teletubby hat. Um, he had lots of little dots all over his face. And even with that, you know, distraction, he was able to create such a compelling and terrifying character in Clue. So I was very curious to see how that turned out. And I think it's just extraordinary. Well, before we run out of time, what do you think non-fans, people who don't really have an association with Tron, might get out of uh, seeing this, this new version of Tron? People certainly don't have to have seen the original to enjoy Tron Legacy. It stands on its own. Um, I think what they'll get out of it is an experience of seeing four different types of filmmaking technology being used for the first time simultaneously. I think they'll enjoy uh, really interesting actors trying things you know they've never done before. Look at Michael Sheen has created this amazing kind of androgynous Ziggy Stardust villain uh, that you absolutely love to hate. And uh, then of course Jeff Bridges playing two different roles. That's really extraordinary to watch him work and to, to see the result of that. So I think people can expect um, an experience unlike anything they've seen before. I think standards have been raised in recent years in terms of what filmmakers um, can, can use to, to entice an audience that is so often kept home by the fact that they have great entertainment systems in their home. Why go to the movies? Tron is one of those movies that you don't want to miss in the theater. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad that people are still making those movies, the kind that really give you an experience.